I've just come back after mining a few more resources with the rescue ship, so let's have a look at what we've done so far. As you can see, I've completed the ground floor of the hangar bay and I've even added some navigation lights to the outside. The reason why I've done this is because 1. It makes it easier to see from a distance and 2. It gives me a point of reference to use when it comes to manually guiding ships in to land in the hangar bay. And as we come through here, you'll notice that I've made a start on a rudimentary airlock system. It is still a long way from being completed, but once it's done, it will function very much the same as the one in the Icarus did. I've also carved out enough space to make the beginnings of this workshop here. I've been quite lucky because I've struck iron whilst I was drilling through the side of the cavern wall, and I've been using that to create the steel plates needed to build the frames and the light armour blocks for the walls. And I've also built that small nuclear reactor over there. It only needs about one kilogram of uranium so far because at the moment all it needs to do is power these lights. I'll probably add some more later on once I've got more machines. But in the meantime, let's keep welding this place up. That's the walls of the workshop complete, and I've also created an emergency supply cargo container there, along with the beginnings of a refinery. And as the name suggests, this contains some emergency supplies, including some spare uranium for the reactor, some repair materials, and an extra oxygen and hydrogen tank, just in case I run out. And because I will not be connecting that container to the conveyor network, it means that the reactor will not pull the uranium from it, and if it ever runs out, I've got that spare fuel to get everything back up and running again. And I need some more steel plates. Right, time to head back out to the rescue ship and collect some more. There we go, that should be enough to complete the refinery. And it's not. Well, no worries. I'm going to quickly steal some from the emergency supplies and hopefully that should be enough to get it functional. I've placed it so that the connections for the upgrade modules are facing in towards the room so it's easier to upgrade in future. And there we are. That's it more or less working now. I'll get a few more steel plates to complete it properly later on. In the meantime, I'll just equip my grinder and cut through this floor here because I need to find the conveyor port connection on this refinery. It should be down here under this floor somewhere in this direction. Nope. Well, maybe it's to the left then. Okay then, by process of elimination it must therefore be to the right. Yeah, there it is. I'll just clear away the rest of this rock. There we go. Once we connect the conveyor or conveyor tube to that access port there, it will enable the machine to share its resources with all the other machines, cargo containers and connectors that are all on the same network. The plan is to eventually have not only all the machines inside this workshop connected together, but also have conveyor tubes that run all the way under the floors here out to the hangar here to a connector right in the middle there that my ships can dock with and unload their cargo to. That's the assembler, refinery and oxygen generator there, all complete and ready to go. All that's left for me to do now is just to go under the floors and have a quick look at the conveyor network I've installed. Right, I need a few more components to complete this curved conveyor tube, so I'll just go back up here, grab these from the assembler and that should be enough for me to get them completed. It looks a bit of a mess at the moment, but that's because a lot of it is still not finished. Um, ideally what I want to do is come back here and where that gap is between those two curved conveyor tubes is stick a standard conveyor which sorts the resources it collects and sends it to the appropriate machines and or cargo containers. But in the meantime, I'll just equip the hand drill and I'll mine my way towards roughly where the centre of the hangar is, just over this way.
OK, that's both the connector and the conveyor that's under the hangar bay both complete. The lights in the conveyor tubes have all turned from red to green, which signifies that they are fully connected between either two conveyors or two machines. And as we come down here, we can see that this one is all green, all connected together, but the ones to the left of it are still red. And the reason why that is, if you look carefully, is because they are still incomplete. They're incomplete because I eventually plan on having them connected to an oxygen tank right here in the workshop as this will be vital in using that air vent over there, in combination with the oxygen tank, to pressurise this entire base so that I can actually breathe oxygen without having to keep my helmet on. And there in the middle of the hangar is the finished connector. And as you can see, I've also done some work on the landing markings in this hangar. It's nothing fancy, but it does make it a little more cosmetically pleasing. And in this room with the groovy red lighting, I am building a hydrogen tank. I have separated it from the rest of the facility with an entire wall of light armor blocks, which was a decision that even met with Ben's approval. Isn't that right, Ben? That is correct, Commander. If the tank suffers any damage, the leaking hydrogen gas may spontaneously ignite, especially near sources of ignition, such as your welding tool. This would be further complicated by zero gravity and a pressurized environment as a hydrogen fire, while being extremely hot, is also almost invisible to the naked eye. Therefore, additional measures and providing protection to the hydrogen tank is a most wise precaution. Yeah, you're damn right. And as I have absolutely no intention of either being blown to smithereens or burnt to a crisp, I will make sure these walls are built well before I even start on the tank itself. Which is just common sense, really. Here we go. These are the last components I will need to bring back to the living quarters I've just finished in order to complete the programmable block, which will be the new mainframe that I will upload Ben's artificial intelligence onto. We lost the initial one when the Icarus exploded, so I've built this new one from scratch. It'll serve as the primary hub from which Ben can monitor this facility and also access any information in the new database. Overall, this should significantly improve Ben's capabilities, which in return means he's able to offer me much more valuable assistance. That's it done. I'll just sit down here and get ready to upload Ben. Okay, here we go. Ben, upload your core program onto the computer mainframe, please. Affirmative, Commander. The mainframe identified. Uploading. Uploading complete. Commencing. Initialization. Protocols. Excellent. Right, I'll just go and pressurize this room and test this out. Well, those four green bars on the air vent means that this room is now pressurized, which means I can take my helmet off now. Ah, <sighs> well, it's cold, but it seems safe enough. Anyway. Ben, please respond and confirm successful mainframe transfer. Acknowledge the commander. I can confirm that I have successfully transferred my core program to the new mainframe. Are you able to hear me over the base's intercon system? I certainly can, Ben. I read you loud and clear. It worked. Excellent. Now that this place is pressurized and we've got oxygen, the next thing we need to focus on is gravity. I'll use the schematics we got from the Event Horizon to build this artificial gravity generator. The best place for it is probably over there so that the field covers both the landing bay and living quarters. Having artificial gravity is vital, not just to combat the ill effects associated with long-term weightlessness, but also to provide us with better fluid management. The main problem we might run into is having both the resources and the power to run this thing. It won't be cheap, that's for sure. I mean, it's already saying I need steel plates, but I need to check the assembler to see exactly what sort of components and resources I'll need to get this finished. Yeah, that was what I was afraid of. Those gravity generator components there require significant amounts of both cobalt and gold. Now, whilst I did get some whilst I was out mining by hand using the rescue ship, I will need to create a dedicated mining vessel in order to gather enough ore to complete these. Now, we don't yet possess the infrastructure for mining drones, so we'll have to use the next best thing. Ben, in your database, do you have any blueprints for basic one-manned mining vessels? Affirmative, Commander. 
In my database, I have the schematics for a basic, type 1, asteroid, grazer. Excellent. That will do nicely. All I need to do now is find a projector, then I can use that with the blueprint and build one out in the hangar. There we go. Do I have the resources to build this thing though? Well, there's only one way to find out. This also gives me the opportunity to test out the new airlock system I created. Here goes. Nice. I'll just head out to the rescue ship and grab some of the components I need from there first, because I still have a lot of stuff from there that could be useful. I have to admit, even at this early stage, I'm still very impressed at how well this place is turning out. That should be the last of the components, and done. Perfect. Right, I'll just gain access to the projector here. Find the blueprints. Mark 1 Grazer. There we go. Yeah, the settings look okay. Well, let's take a look. Cool. Hey, I actually do recognize this ship, except this one looks a bit more advanced than the one I remember seeing. The one I saw was just a prototype. It was a lot smaller, lighter, it was painted in red with white stripes, and it didn't have that conveyor system or ore detector on it, or as much armour as this one, and the engines were sticking out. This one looks way better. I can't wait to get this thing built. Before I make a start, I'm going to go into the projector here and change the settings so it can only show me the buildable blocks, that way it'll make it a lot easier for me to keep track of which blocks need to be built. As you can see, what this does is it only highlights the blocks next to the ones that have been welded, which makes it a lot easier to keep track of things. The only thing I would change, if any, is in future I would like the settings to show me which ones have been built completely, not the blocks I've actually only made a start on, because otherwise, as you can see here, it does get a little bit cluttered. It's probably something I'll have to raise with Benson at some point in time to see if he's able to actually make those kind of changes. But in the meantime, let's see how far I can get on with this. This is going to take a little while to do by hand. In future, I'll probably either make a welding ship, or have some sort of welder that's built into the walls of the hangar that extends using a piston that can do all this for me. It'll just save so much time. Okay, that's the front half of the mining ship done. Let's take a look at the back. I still need to complete the conveyor systems, small reactors and gyroscopes, as well as the engines. Now, hopefully I should have enough resources to get this done. If not, I'll just have to go back out mining again. Ah, now that should be easy enough. I can use this connector right behind me to get those components I need. There we go, let's get this built. Now that the mining ship is finished, I'll just grind away this projector, reactor and landing gear, and I can save the components for later use. Make sure there's no damage down there. Cool. Now let's take a look at it. Nice. I guess it's time for me to hop inside and make sure everything works okay. All reactors, check. Spotlights, check. 
Or detector is working fine. Let's check out the front camera. Yep, looks good. And also the downward camera. This will really help when it comes to docking with the connector. Yeah, everything looks great. I'll just switch the antenna on and go back outside and test out the remote control function. It's not much use at the moment because my spacesuit only has a 200 meter range to remotely control things, but later on, once this asteroid base has a sensor array and an antenna, it is going to be vital for long range remote mining operations. That's working fine. I've got full access via the ship's remote control unit. Now I'll just switch to the camera view. Yay, it's me! Cool. Well, I'm satisfied everything is working perfectly, so let's take this bad boy out for a spin. <laughs> I'm making it sound like it's a sports car or something. There's the hangar, and the rescue ship. It's not the most manoeuvrable ship I've ever flown, but then again it is a rather heavy mining vessel. Okay, let's go and see if I can find a relatively large vein of iron ore to mine. This one up ahead looks as though it will do nicely. I like how the ore detector on this ship has got a lot more range than the hand drill does. Right, let's line it up and turn on the drills. Here we go. Look at that, so much faster than the hand drill. Brilliant. Okay, our overall mass is getting close to 30,000 kilograms, so let's see how we've done. It looks like we've got just over 14,000 kilograms of iron ore, which should be enough for the moment, so I'll take the ship back to the asteroid base and unload our cargo. I've just realised I've disabled the asteroid base waypoint on my HUD. Well, I'll just go back into the GPS menu, put it back on again. There we go. Sorted. Well, I wouldn't want us to get lost on the mining ship's maiden flight now, would I? Now this is just the Grazer Mark 1. There's also a Grazer Mark 2 which has drills that are slightly closer together, bigger engines, a stronger reactor and more cargo capacity. Unfortunately it takes more resources to build, so this is probably the best first choice. And besides, I don't think Ben has the blueprints for that one. The Mark III is a large ship. It is a four-crew vessel that has life support systems, robotic arms with drills on them, and is designed for deep space mining operations in the solar system's asteroid belt. Suffice to say, we won't be building anything like that here. It just would not be practical. I'll just guide the mining ship into the hangar here. And because it's smaller, there's less chance of me hitting the sides. And as I get closer to the connector, I'll just do a quick 180. And switch to the downward camera view. This will make docking so much easier. There we go. Gently does it. Just have to remember that the connector is just slightly beneath my camera view, so I need to line it up accordingly. And there we go. 
the yellow means that the magnets are pulling for the connectors, and green. I've engaged the magnetic locks. Now, as we can see from here, the cargo bay is empty, which means that if we check, the refinery and arc furnace should have taken all the iron ore out and should be processing it. Yep, it's shared between both of them. Excellent, that's exactly what we were looking for. Brilliant! As far as I'm concerned, that was a successful flight. So let's get out the ship and head back inside our base again. Man, I still think that looks cool. Actually, before I go back inside, I just want to quickly go over some plans I have for the outside of the base. At some point in the very near future, I plan on extending the base. So up here, around this place, next to the landing bay, I plan on building an observation post or command and control centre. This will overlook the hangar bay, and after that's completed, I will extend it out even further and build an antenna or sensor array, which will serve three purposes. Firstly, it will enable us to remotely control a mining ship from further away. Two, it will enable Ben to scan the nearby planets in the star system. And three, it will enable us to send a distress signal back to Earth. But that's a project for a later date. Right now, we need to focus on completing the artificial gravity generator. Okay, that should be the last of the components I need, so let's see if I can get this thing completed. Aha, yes! That sounds promising. Right, let's check the settings. Yep, everything looks okay. Right, I have been in zero gravity for quite some time, so I will not put it up to 1G, I will slowly increase it to 0.66 Earth gravities, just until I can get used to it again. Okay, let's go and check it out. Whoa, yeah, I still feel heavy even though it's at a lower setting than normal, which is probably because I'm not used to it. Anyway, exercise. A quick jog around the hangar bay will probably do me the world of good. Whee! <laughs> I love how I can jump higher than normal in this lower gravity. In fact, this is pretty much perfect. Ben, I couldn't help but notice that the field size in the gravity generator had already been set. That wasn't your doing by any chance, was it? Yes, Commander. I took the liberty of inputting the required settings into the gravity generator's default field size. Ah, Benson. You, sir, are an absolute legend. What thank you, Commander. I do try my best. <laughs> oh dear. And the funny thing is, he's telling the truth. Now, first things first, I need to use the medical room and get my hand fixed up. I accidentally injured it when I was messing around with the assembler earlier, so the sooner I get that seen to, the better. You know what, Ben? I feel we have made some really good progress recently. In fact, I feel that we have a very good chance that one day soon we'll make it back home. I agree, Commander. The chances of us surviving long enough to be rescued, or even being able to create a new vessel that can take us back to Earth, has increased significantly. Exactly, Ben. Our chances may have been grim to begin with, but after seeing the progress we've made so far, I really do feel that things are starting to go our way.